The rugged central coast of California has some of the world's most beautiful vistas. Standing here in Point Lobos, considered the crown jewel of California state parks, I'm reminded of the importance that the natural world has on our well-being. Hi, I'm Tracy Gillette Ritchie of the Point Lobos Foundation, and I invite you to join us as we take a journey into the heart and soul of this natural reserve, which has inspired painters, poets, and photographers for generations to interpret the natural wonders found here in their own unique way. Thank you for your love and support of Point Lobos. Let's immerse ourselves in the words and images shared by several of our local artists and emerge with hope, peace, and inspiration. A shadowless, still water morning in Sea Lion Cove. Deep silence, broken periodically by our namesake pinnipeds, those amiable inebriates hallooing out on their rocks. Then a splash, as an apparently mutually enamored pair of harbor seals appears below, twisting, turning, somersaulting, twining together. Eventually they submerge and slip westwards, ghostly visible in the clear waters. In counter movement, a pigeon guillemot comes whirring in on prestissimo wings, breaks, extends its impossibly orange feet, and sets down on the muscle-covered shore rock. Stillness returns. The gray waters mirror the sky. Suddenly a flickering pattern transforms the surface, as overhead a platoon of brown pelicans, ponderous, graceful, courses northwards. Let us consider Point Lobos after Christopher Smart. Let the children delight with the sea otters who eat and sleep on their backs, who use rocks to crack crabs. Let the teenagers exult with the ocean as its waves explode over rocks, daring them to come closer. Let the survivors grieve with Monterey Pines, who've lost many companions to drought and pine beetles. Let the medical workers find solace in granite, as it withstands tremendous forces that threaten its existence. Let the weary be uplifted by the iris, whose purple petals glow in the shadows, whose thin green leaves welcome the spring. Let the hikers celebrate with a sunset as its rich oranges, brilliant yellows flare and paint the sky. 
Let the visitors rejoice in Point Lobos, a haven for the natural world, a sanctuary for all. Beautiful hidden beach with Mark Greener. Hi, Mark. Hello. What are you doing today? Well, we're um, out here trying to um, catch the beauty of Point Lobos. It's uh, a beautiful day <laughs> at Point Lobos, and uh, for a painter, this is probably one of the uh, most spectacular uh, places you can, you can ever find the paint. It's uh, get a, get, getting some uh, nice afternoon light. This time of the year is probably the best time of the year for painting. Um, the sun is a little lower in the sky. The atmosphere is a little warmer. If you go to uh, a museum and uh, you see somebody getting right up, getting their nose right into the painting. You know it's an artist. They're looking at the brushwork. It's almost like the artist's signature, his personality. Back in over these, over this area, and try to separate the uh, planes. There's, there's a big vertical plane here. But then there's these flat planes that are facing up toward the sky. And, uh, and then there's planes that are catching the light way up on the, uh, on the very top. Weaving a time-honored pattern before the morning dew. It's all in the preparation. It takes time to see it through. The fine details should not be noticed, nor the care with which it's placed. For if it calls attention, the labor would be a waste. It's just a sticky invitation to all that may pass by to Please stop in for breakfast, and then just say goodbye. Hi, I'm Steve Zamack, a landscape and nature photographer and host of the photo TV show, West Coast Focus. This is Weston Beach, named after the famous lineage of photographers that called Point Lobos their backyard playground for their art. It began with Edward Weston right here in 1929. Then came his sons, Brett and Cole Weston, followed by Kim and Cara Weston, and now Zach Weston can be seen out here practicing the nearly 100-year-old family craft. But you could have easily called this place Ansel Adams Beach, Imogen Cunningham Cove, 
Wind Bullock Rocks, John Sexton Shore, or a host of other world-renowned photographers that produced and continue to produce stunning imagery from this unique land and seascape. Nature photographers don't just capture explosive sunsets, crashing waves, and awesome wildlife for the sake of their beauty. We have a spiritual connection to the earth, and practicing our art feeds our souls. Look, I think I see Ansel Adams tripod holes right here. Nah, just Chuck Bancroft's. The first moonlit landscape photos I ever took were right here on the Point Lobos Foundation's annual full moon hike 15 years ago. Although Weston Beach is named for a photography legacy, really the entire reserve is just as sacred. Even though I bring students to Weston Beach, I myself am more called to the northern areas of the reserve. For some, it's the ocean that speaks to them. For others, it's the enchanted woods, rare wildlife, or cultural history. Today, the photographic traditions of the masters that came before us are kept alive by such organizations as the Weston Collective, a youth education and scholarship program for young photographers embedded in local schools and colleges that includes a black and white film and darkroom portfolio competition. For more than a century, Point Lobos has inspired artists of all mediums to make pilgrimages here just to experience and record the awesomeness of where the land meets the sea in violence and harmony. Every day looks completely different from the last and the light along with it. But don't take my word for it. Come bring your camera and find out for yourself. To be a bat. I'm thinking that I would like to give it a try. I'd hang upside down and turn a frown into a sly, devilish grin. I'd unfold my wings and do the things that bats so like to do, like catching flies as they go buzzing by. They're no match for my echolocation. And then at night, Wrapped up so tight in a dark corner of my cave, I'd close my eyes. And no surprise, I'd dream of what I'd like to be. White, effervescent paint drifted atop incessant waves of deep blue much like a light dusting of snow. The horizon rose up like distant peaks, disappearing into light gray billowing fog. Spellbound, I stopped. A yearning arose to disappear into that clean, pure, never-ending light. No thoughts, cares, regrets. Light, floating, buoyant, carefree, lost in nothingness. Hi, I'm Cynthia Wagner Weick, and I'm here at Point Lobos on the shore of Whalers Cove. I'm going to talk today about an artist from history who was inspired by the reserve. Now, as we all know, a lot of artists came to Point Lobos throughout history. I'm going to talk about Chura Obata. Now, Obata may not have the name recognition of some of the other artists like Ritchell or Fortune or Morgan or Hansen, but he should, and indeed that's changing. In September 2020, the California State Assembly named a highway after Chura Obata, the Great Nature Highway. Now it's near Yosemite where he was also influenced, but Obata spent a lot of time here. This is a painting that was inspired by Whaler's Cove. It's a large mural and it's done in the traditional ink and brush technique that Obata learned in Japan where he grew up. When he was about 18 years old, he moved to San Francisco and ultimately became a professor at UC Berkeley. He taught a lot of students there and indeed is credited with influencing the California Watercolor School. The Obatas would visit the Kodani family quite frequently. Of course, Genezuk Kodani was the business partner of A.M. Allen in the abalone business for many years. One of the Obata daughters ended up marrying a Kodani son. 
Our Tatura Obata was a celebration of great nature, or Dai Shuzen in Japanese. But it was much more to him than that. Let me read you a quote. Paintings, he said, must give to others the kinds of feelings about nature that nature gives us. If we pass this along, not just to art lovers, but to everybody, our friends, our community, our country, it is the best possible promise for peace in the future. Chura Obata also used art as a way to keep spirits up as much as possible in the Japanese internment camp where he was incarcerated with his family during World War II. He gathered other artists together and they offered classes in the camp. For his humanitarianism, his great artistic talent, and also his efforts after the war to promote relations between America and Japan, he was given the Emperor's Medal in Tokyo, Japan. This is a painting, also color ink, that was inspired by Cypress Cove here at Point Lobos. This particular work was featured at an exhibition that was shown at the Crocker Museum in Sacramento, and then that exhibition went on to the Smithsonian American Art Museum in Washington, D.C. If you're further interested in Obata, I highly recommend that you go to the Smithsonian website because they have a couple of articles and really good videos on Chura Obata. And if you remain even more interested after that, uh, I'd suggest the book that went along with that exhibition. It's called Chura Obata, an American Modern. Thank you.